everybody, my name is Beatrice and welcome to Storytime with B. Today we're going to be reading The Day You Begin. The reason why I chose this story is because, well, sometime in your life you're going to feel like you're different or that you don't belong. And I hope that the story makes you a little bit braver and like you're included. The Day You Begin by Jacqueline Woodson, illustrated by Rafael Lopez. Jacqueline Woodson is an American writer for books for kids and adolescents. She is best known for Miracle Boys and her new very honor-winning titles, Brown Girl Dreaming, after Tupac and Dee Foster, Feathers, and Show Way. Rafael Lopez is an internationally recognized illustrator and artist. The illustrations created by Lopez bring diverse characters to children's books, and he works to produce and promote books that reflect and honor the lives of all young people. So let's dive into the story. There will be times when you walk into the room and no one there is quite like you. Maybe it will be your skin, your clothes, or the curl of your hair. There will be times when no one understands the way words curl from your mouth, the beautiful language of the country you left behind. My name is Rigoberto. We just moved here from Venezuela. And because they don't understand, the class will fill up with laughter until the teacher quiets everyone. Rigoberto from Venezuela. Your teacher says so soft and beautifully that your name and homeland sound like flowers blooming the first bright notes of a song. There will be times when the words don't come. Your own voice went huge, now smaller. When the teacher asks you, what did you do last summer? Tell the class your story. We went to France, Shayla says. These shells came from a beach in Maine. A boy named Jonathan holds out a jar filled with tiny shells so fragile they look like they'll turn into dust in your own untraveled hands. My whole family went to India, Spain, South Carolina. Each souvenir a small triumph of a journey. Their travels going on and on. As you stand in front of that room, you can only remember how the heat waved as it lifted off of the curb. And your days spent at home caring for your little sister, who made you laugh out loud and hugged you hard at nap time. You can only remember the books you kept on reading long after she had fallen to sleep. And in that room where no one else is quite like you, you'll look down at your own empty hands and wonder, what good is this when other students were flying and sailing and going somewhere? There will be times when the lunch your mother packs for you is too strange or too unfamiliar for others to love as you do. When even your own friend Nadia will wrinkle her nose and say, what's in there anyway? And you'll wonder how she doesn't see the rice beneath the meat and kimchi. You'll wonder why she doesn't remember that rice is the most popular food in the world. There will be times when the climbing bars are too high, the run is too fast and far. The game isn't one you can ever really play. I don't want him on our team. You can watch. Maybe you can have a turn later. There will be times when the world feels like a place that you're standing all the way outside of. And all that stands beside you is your own brave self. Steady as steel and ready even though you don't know yet what you're ready for. There will be times when you walk into a room and no one there is quite like you until the day you begin to share your stories. My name is Angelina, and I spent my whole summer with my little sister, you tell the class. Your voice stronger than it was a minute ago, 
reading books and telling stories, and even though you were right on our block, it was like you got to go everywhere. Your name is like my sister's, Rigoberto says. Her name is Angelina, too. And all at once, in a room where no one else is quite like you, the world opens itself up a little wider to make some space for you. This is the day you begin, to find the places inside your laughter and your lunches, your books, your travel, and your stories, where every new friend has something a little like you, and something else so fabulously not quite like you at all. So I hope that you liked the book like I did. It's one of my personal favorites, and I think that it's one of the most inspiring books I've ever read. And if you're like, if you're transgender or lesbian or gay, LGBTQ from a different race, you should you shouldn't be afraid. You shouldn't be afraid to be you. You should be who you are and who you're meant to be. So when I was in first grade, I was having a hard time with like coming out as who I really am. I was honestly terrified when I was about to come out. Like I was scared about what everybody else would say. Like at school, I was teased a little bit, but after about like the first 90 days of being trans, which that might sound like a lot, but when you actually just get through it, it's not that much. And so like people did tease me, yes. And I eventually like got past that and just thought about happy thoughts and all that. It was it was a hard time for me, but that was in first grade. That was three years ago, and now I'm in fourth grade. People teased me about wearing quote unquote girl clothes and that I was a boy. They actually did say that. It was a very hard time for me. I had a lot of like. I had a lot of like sad moments. So this right here is Hammy. This little, this big brown guy. And the reason why he's the special guest for today is because the story that we read, The Day You Begin, it's all about being different. And Hammy, in fact, is different because he only has one, two, three legs. He doesn't have full legs. He only has three. He bounces around the garden like he has 15 trillion legs. And Hammy is his nickname. His full name is Hammerstein. And his favorite things are like food, uh, going outside in the snow. He's the biggest snow dog. He loves the snow so much. He loves getting attention. We made his voice sound dopey. So him, he also likes to plop down. He likes to sit like right in the way wherever somebody is. Like, hi, I'm here too, you know, hello. So like, he will literally bound through the snow like, we, oh, 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 oh. He's, really nice, he's really sweet, and he he loves everybody. Hammy's a very goofy dog. He actually smiles when he scratches noggin in the right place. He's like, oh, oh. Since he was three months old, he was only three months old when we got him, he is now six years old if I re remember correctly yeah six years old and so ever since we got him when he was three months old he only had three legs he is more energetic than almost any dog I have ever seen in my life he is the biggest energy ball ever yeah he can run 
like at the supersonic speed of light and uh he jumps like one of he jumps like crazy town like if jack um hammy is okay with swimming he can swim very very well <laughs> we put the dogs in the pool and uh we do a dog race. Whoever gets to the finish line first is the winner. Jack will often trail off and is like, help me, help me. I don't like the water. Hemi's taught me that if you like, it doesn't really matter how you appear as like physical differences. He does only have three legs. You shouldn't really like think about that you really have like a dis dis blah, blah, disability. You should try to focus on the good things. Like that doesn't mean that you're like less than somebody else. Like somebody that doesn't have any disabilities or anything like that. You should just uh, be strong, be proud embrace who you are and who you want to be and whoever you are really and i am probably going to get him to lick my face if you do not like watching a, a dog lick somebody else's face then look away <laughs> so Bye! Yeah. Wait, I need water. But I think it's- To scare the hiccups away. Interesting, okay. <laughs> water? <laughs> That's sad. Wait. Gas. Yeah. Oh. Huh? Oh yeah. Did you hear that? <sighs> there was one in there. I lost it. I lost it. Have you ever lost a burp? Mm -hmm.